focus on the honey trap. Look at that. Right there, I spot them also, but look at she looking over there looking at me. Look, yeah, keep walking. <laughs> keep walking, girl. She was she was over there. Well, you guys saw when I just recalled from the bus stop. She got into a car. Why are you looking at me like that for, girl? <laughs> and a black vehicle, too. There you go. There you go. Call it black. There you go. She was standing over there, constantly looking at me as I was recording. Uh, hey, I should tell you how, how these women are, right? She wait, ain't waiting for, for her man or what have you, but she, she eyeing the brother out with the cane. I mean, I know I, you know, I still look handsome, but you're too young for me, girl. You're too young. I'm not that kind of man. I've always dated. I would say I was dated. If I'm going to date anybody younger, be five years younger. Anybody older, five years older than me. That's it. So, sorry for all you youngins out there. Nigel is unavailable to all you youngins. Sorry. No candy. And if you got a man, you know, you ain't got to eye me down like. Like you want all of that, all of this. No, thank you. I'll pass. The way all women are today, forget it. <laughs> and the sad part about it too, y'all don't, don't know the destruction y'all causing y'all mindset and y'all ability to peer bond and have a, a good, long lasting relationship. So, yeah. I like to talk about it. I was watching a video today and um, this this dude broke he broke it down. He was like, you know, these people today talk about love. We really don't know what love is. You know, love is love isn't a feeling. That's not love. Love is commitment. Love is honor, love is respect. Love, love is duty to the person that you're with. Then you get to then you then you get to love that person. Then you get to be in love with that person. See, Hollywood have taught us backwards. Say that love is a feeling. It's not a love is not a feeling. If love, if love was a feeling that you get, then why do so many of you Christians so the, all are heading to divorce after what a few years of marriage? After two three years of marriage, all of a sudden is uh, oh I don't love you anymore. My I'm not getting you know particularly for women or you're not you're not tickling my fancy <laughs> right and this is why they jump from relationship to relationship from men to men from man to man because anybody that comes along and you know give them that tingling feeling that's who they want that's who they they, they want to have sex with and want to be with until the reality sets in then it's on to the next they're addicted to that feel good feeling, right? <laughs> this is why they're always talking about, oh, well, you know, uh, I, I don't feel the same. You know, it's, it's, men are different. See, when men are committed in a relationship, they're committed. They're not thinking about their feelings, right? They're thinking about their, their duty. They're thinking about honoring the person that they're with, respecting the person that they're with. Okay? <laughs> And that's the difference, the big difference between men and women. So when women think that they want to be like men, particularly in that, they only want to be like men in that they can sleep around because they think that they got an invisible penis, but they don't understand that they got a vagina. And on top of that, you got ovary, you got a womb. You can get pregnant. And when you get pregnant, guess what? Your body change. That pregnancy puts you through a lot of change, not just biologically, but chemically and also psychologically. So if you think sleeping around and having all these different kids by different men, right? That you think that, you know, that's okay. You're, you're destroying your mental health. You're destroying your body. And on top of that, you're putting your very children that you birthed through trauma. 
right? That's what you do. You're putting the very children that you're birthing through trauma. Okay? Because guess what? When you have all these kids by different men, the men that you claim you want don't take you, not going to take you seriously, and then you're going to get mad, you're going to get upset. Okay, this is why, <laughs> you know, like I said, we within the black community, both black men and black women, we haven't been taught well. As a matter of fact, we haven't been taught anything about relationships, about uh, uh, commitment, about respect for one another. No. We operate, our culture operate on our conditioning, which is feel good, dysfunctionality, right? Um, you know, want to have fun. 24-7, particularly for the women, want to have fun 24-7, okay, they want to live their best life, right, I tell you, every night I leave, uh, this weekend I left, I leave the kids at, at Pam's, you know, and it's like, the way how her place is, is, is ridiculous, even tonight she's on a date, she's on a date with one of her male friends, you know, Got in the, the, the apartment this morning, flies all over the place, cockroaches, the kids are running over all, there's all these cockroaches. And what's she doing? What's she doing? She's having fun. You know, my son had tests in the regions this week. Not once did she even talk to him or, you know, sit him down or even, even when I'm not there to make sure that he's studying, make sure he gets a good night's sleep before you go and take the test. He's up late. And she, she holds no responsibility. It's all on the kids. Oh, it's the kids. Oh, my, oh your daughter was up till 4 a.m. in the morning. Before you go to bed, you make sure they're in bed. You make sure their computers are turned off. You make sure their electronic devices are turned off. You take, my, you take our son's phone from him. That's what I do. You take, put it on the, on the chart. Put it on his desk, his computer desk, so he can be charged for in the morning. But that's not what she does. She got home last night. What happened? When I left, she was sleeping. She was sleeping, I tell her I'm, I'm leaving, she was sleeping. And I can't tell her nothing. Can't, I can't tell her nothing at all. So, there's this functional mindset and I have to talk to my kids and as they get older, I have these real conversation with them, you know? <laughs> so, uh, so that they, they understand, so that they don't, um, you know, they don't have any misconception of, of, of the world that, they know nothing about that. When they go out there in the real world, they'll absolutely be prepared and understand uh, the real world, right? So yeah. Anyhow, that is clown. <laughs> yeah, bro, you look, you checking me out, bro? I, I keep telling you guys, I'm not gay. I'm not gay, man. Okay, I tell you, I need to stop it. I'm not gay. <laughs> Y'all need to stop it. I'm not gay. All right? I'm a lesbian. I only like women. That's right. I'm a lesbian. I only like women. I'm not gay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know, yesterday, too, they're on the, on the bus. Um, they had these two gay guys uh, standing right here, right here. You know? They always try to do, they always try to do that, that gay thing. Because you know why? They think they've got me to a point where I hate women. <laughs> and I got to laugh. Because again, it just showed how flawed their system is. Right? It may work for a lot of people, but it won't work for me. Why? Because again, um, I'm not religiously indoctrinated. Nor religiously inclined. You know? I'm not into... The threesomes and the foursomes. I'm not into the hypersexual, even though that's the narrative they want to put out there. I've never been like that. You know? Just like any man who doesn't who doesn't love sex. Which man you don't don't love sex? So even the gay men love sex between the other gay men. Right? So again, if they're trying to I, I, but that's what they do with black men anyway. Where we're over, we're hypersexualized. It's like how they've made uh, a black woman hypersexualized today, right? Because now they're even they they're hypersexualizing their own self, right? 
go go to YouTube. You'll see them shaking their ass all over the YouTube, and you know, in their car, getting out of their car, shaking their asses, twerking over the place, and very proud of it, and talking about women empowerment and talking about freedom. <laughs> You know, like I said, what if a black man was to talk about his penis? Look, 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 look at the clown movie. Look at the clown movie. So if, if the black man was bragging about how big his dick was, or as big as penis was, they'd be they'd be jumping on him. But they let black women talk about their vagina, you know, their vagina. Yeah, you see them on YouTube all the time. Oh, my vagina is this, my vagina is this, this and this. I got that good, good, this and that. Right? They make songs about that shit. Let a let a let a black man make a song about his penis and see how he get ostracized, how he get ridiculed. But black women are allowed to make songs about their vagina, about how good it is, how this and that. But that's the mindset that they've created within black women, and they don't even understand it. This is why our community is the way it is, and it's been like that for the past 30 years. They the white supremacists have put their psychological condition in place, and and it has done very well. It has done very well. And any black man or black woman that sees it and, you know, bring it to the attention, what do they do? They beat up on him. They gang up on him. They say, oh, he, he's misogynistic. He's this, he's that. But they, you, how come you never heard the word misandry? Misandry is hatred for men. Right? This is what a lot of these women display today. They display misandry towards men. But you never hear the word misandry. You don't hear it on social media. You don't hear it in the, in the, in the me news media. But you will hear the word misogynistic. Right? Because we don't understand the psychological conditions. We don't understand the psyops, the psychological warfare. So we fall into these traps. saying they're setting up these young black boys for failure and they're going to use these young black women to do it one decade then the next decade you'll see what's going to happen anyhow uh my bus is supposed to be coming out said 15 minutes but the clown left though <laughs> the clown the clown left you tell them I'm not I'm not gay. So I'm sending these gay men. Okay, I'm not gay. <laughs> All right. Anyhow, oh look at him across the street there. What happened, bro? What happened, bro? Across the street over there, the red hat. <laughs> what? Look, look, look. I put the camera in. You turn around. <laughs> yes, walk away. You know that song by Dion Warwick. Every time you see me. On the street, walk on by. Uh, 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 uh. Walk on by. You foolish perps. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Let me tell you, I used to be a DJ, so I, you know, my love of music is still with me. Right? Now, I mean, I remember a lot of the songs, but some of the, you know, this is what. How I heal myself at times, and you have to. You have, as a TI uh, going through what we go through, you have to find ways in order to humor yourself in certain moments. All right? You have to. You know, because like I said, I know their playbook. I know their, I, I know their, I know their playbook. I know their playbook. They've already revealed all of it. Okay. Uh, or at least 90% of it, I should say. So, you know, there you go. I know they pay me. Anyhow, I'll talk to you guys in the next video.